And now, Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger, and I have another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. This is the story of Bret Hart, the man who gave the world those immortal stories of the California gold rush. The events you're going to see are all packed into one short year, the year of 1857. The year in Bret Hart's life, which I call Year of Destiny. The year is young, and so is a slender youth from New York City. Only 20, and a stranger to this wild mining country. Wonder what the young gentleman is perusing. Dickens. Dickens? <laughs> Why, he can't even cuss yet. <laughs> That's the name of the author, Charles Dickens. The stage is late, isn't it? Don't tell me you're headed for the mine, Sonny. That's right. In them? Why, patent letters for dancing teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll invest in some heavy boots with the first gold I dig. Dig? Smooth as a baby's. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a fight you want to pick. No. All I'm trying to tell you, Sonny. The name is Hart. Frank Hart. Well, Frank, you got to have guts to stand a life out here. And you think I haven't got guts? Hey, hurry up! Give us a hand, boys! Get him in the depot before he bleeds to death! He didn't get the treasure, though. Who volunteered to ride shotgun in Johnny's place? Not me. I got business right here. I'll do it. Can you shoot? Certainly. My life depends on it. It will. Get aboard. Young fat leather headed in it. Put your gun down. Them ain't road agents. Got room for any more passengers? Sorry, Duchess. We're full up. Ah, oh, I can't walk another step. Where are you bound for? Oh, anywhere. They kicked us out of Poker Flat and told us not to come back. If you could just accommodate the lady. Lady? Huh. Don't make me laugh. But she ride up here with us? There's plenty of room. There's room for you up here, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> What about the others? They'll have to hoof it. Get it, Juke! Wait! Hey! Where'd you get the name Duchess? My professional name. The others? The dressy gent is known as Slick Nick. A gambler? Oh, naturally. The old bum, he's Billy 
Ali Badam. But you ain't interested. Oh, but I am. I'm very much interested. Slick Nick, Billy B. Dam, and the Duchess. Little did Frank Hart realize that his interest in these colorful characters and the others he would meet would play such an important part in this year of his destiny. When the Sierra snows melted, Frank forsook the job of Wells Fargo messenger for that of school teacher in a remote mining camp. Arithmetic, out of a book. I'll give you an example out of real life. Five thousand dollars. That's the amount of gold I took out of one pocket up there on the hill in less than a half hour. Three thousand dollars I spent building a flume and tunneling. And that left, uh... Two thousand. Uh, Two thousand dollars. And you just keep on subtracting and subtracting and subtracting until you're down to a few hundred. And that's just enough to start us alone with myself as my own best customer. Why, you must be old. Go ahead and say it, old Bummer Smith. Sure. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Smith. I've been wanting to talk to you. Well, I hear, boy. What's on your mind? I understand you have a daughter. I have. How old is she? Growing up. I wish you'd bring her here to school. The school. You might as well ask me to bring your young wildcat. Melissa pays me no mind, and I pay her no mind. Mr. Smith. Bomber Smith, harsh, bitter, and unfriendly. A self-confessed failure, both as a man and a father. A weakling who found life harder to face than death. They buried him in Booth Hill this morning. And what about his child? She didn't even show up for the funeral. Off in the woods somewhere. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. You don't know Melissa. She's got a heart of granite. children to keep the school open through the summer. And young Frank Hart's next employment during his year of destiny was a printer's devil on the Northern California, a newspaper published in Humboldt County, California. Hello. Oh, Mr. McConnell. Good morning, sir. Boss out? He's gone away. He left me in charge of the paper. I just finished an editorial for tomorrow's issue. Cowardly massacre. You can't print this. Why not? It's true. Those were engines that were killed. Sixty of them, in cold blood, by a bunch of white ruffians. The most dastardly thing I ever heard of. Engine baiting ain't exactly new in these parts, son. And decent citizens sit back and do nothing about it. Well, maybe they will after they read that. Take my advice and tear it up. It'll get you into trouble. I don't care if it costs me my job on the paper. I'm going to voice a protest against this barbarism if it's the last thing I do. It might very well be, son. It might very well be. Who does this outsider think he is coming into town and printing an article like this about us citizens? Yeah. 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 We only gave them engines what they deserve. They're not yeah. half enough. Yeah. And if we let them get away with it, there ain't no telling what he's liable to print next. No, yeah. You know, a fellow like this could cause us a lot of trouble. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, we ought to go down there and bust up that newspaper office, and then we ought to take this engine love and squirt out and teach them how to dance on the end of a rope. That's yeah. right. Yeah. right. Fill them up again. Yeah. 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 They're getting fired up for a lynching party. You'd better make yourself scarce. 
You leave this place for them to wreck? No, sir. Those won't do you any good, Frank. Don't you realize it's a mob? I appreciate your concern, Mr. McConnell, but I will not run. Then I will. To Fort Humble for help. I only hope we can get back in time. Shoot the first man that takes another step. Ah, he's bluffing. He's only a kid. I rode shotgun for Wells Fargo. One move forward from anybody and he's a dead man. It'll go easier on you if you lay down them pistols. You mean that rope won't feel so rough around my neck? You got nobody to blame but yourself. You shouldn't have printed them lies about us citizens. If what I printed is lies, all you have to do is prove it. And I'll print a retraction and an apology. <laughs> This is the only kind of an apology we want. Take him up. good. You know, I believe you're right. I guess the time's come to head down to San Francisco. See what offers there. And so as the year of destiny waned, we find young Frank Hart in the office of the Golden Era in San Francisco, working as a typesetter. And in his spare moments, scribbling poetry. Oh, Frank. With my compliments. A dollar? What for? That poem of yours we published anonymously. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Have you ever tried your hand at writing fiction, my boy? Well, I thought about it, sir, but I don't know whether I really have the talent or not. All you need is uh, an idea and some characters. Well, I've met plenty of characters in this past year. The outcast from Poker Flat, dance hall queen in Roaring Camp and her baby, old Bummer Smith who killed himself, and his wild daughter, Melissa. Why don't you try putting some of them down on paper, hmm? I'll pay you a dollar a column for anything we can use. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> the Sierra Nevada begins to subside in gentler undulation, and rivers grow less rapid and yellow, on the side of a great red mountain stands the settlement of Smith's Pocket. And at the end of its long, straggling street past the Methodist Church in the Monte Bank stands the village school. Come in. Schoolmaster, yes. Well, I want to be peached, and I don't care what you say, I'm coming to school. You 
you come tomorrow morning. School starts at 8. And now I'm going to walk you home. Where do you live? No, nowhere. Claude died. We'll find you a place with some nice family. <laughs> And you'll all take your seats, and school will come to order. And uh, now today, we are going to have a lesson. Oh, Melissa, come in. Have a seat right here in front for you. Hey, look, she's got on a clean dress. <laughs> That's one of my old ones. She's living at our house. We took her in. Hey, she's got on shoes. She's Kate. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. 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 Yes, sir. Oh, you've got blood on your hand. Let me get it off for you. away here, do you? Are you hungry? Famished. Haven't had anything since dinner yesterday. If you was an Indian, you'd find roots and berries. If I were an Indian. But I'm not. I'm only disappointed schoolmaster. Where are you going? Back to school. You were disappointed. I think you can guess why. I'll go back. Who thinks they can answer my question? Melissa. Planets revolve in six orbits. The sun and the moon, the earth and the stars, all in harmony. That's why they talk about the music of the spheres. Just a minute, Melissa. This is an examination in astronomy. Well, you asked me about the solar system. And you said it had been going on like this since the creation. Is that the truth? Yes. <sighs> yes, Clytemnestra? It says in the Bible, Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still, and they obeyed him. Correct. It's a trusted lie. I don't believe it. What is it, Arlene? Melissa's going to run away again. What's that? 
She took up with one of them actor fellows in the traveling company. They're moving out tomorrow morning. Which actor? Him with the shiny hat and the gold watch chain. I seen her talking to him just now at the arcade. Where is he? Who? Melissa Smith. I don't know. I understand she's considering joining your troop. Is that true? Suppose it is. You know very well that's no kind of a light for a young girl. And uh, what business is it of yours? I happen to be her guardian. Really? Rather young, aren't you? I appeal to you as a gentleman to leave her where she is. Want to keep her for yourself, eh? Sorry, old man. <laughs> Did he get you? No. Just burned my sleeve. Well, it's a good thing Melissa called us. Melissa? Well, that's who you was fighting over, wasn't it? I'm busy. Why didn't you kill him? Kill him? Well, sure, that's what I give you the knife for. You? I slipped it in your hand when you was on the floor. Why didn't you stick him? And be a murderer as well as a fool? Fool? Fine thing for a schoolmaster. Get mixed up in a barroom brawl. Now I will have to leave town. Were you really planning to run off with that troop? I could still do it. I'll have you locked up first. Then I'll kill myself. Melissa. My father did it, so why shouldn't I? At least it's better than staying on here alone where everybody hates and despises me. Listen. <laughs> Will you marry me? Marry you? Yes. Tonight. There's a new preacher at the foot of the mountain. He'll tie the knot. And, and leave here? Yes. Say you will. they passed into the road, and behind them the school of Red Mountain closed upon them forever. We'll print it in our next issue. Do you really think it's good enough, sir? So good, it's got to be signed. Just what is your full name, son? Francis B. Hart, sir. Francis. Sounds rather la-di-da. What does the B stand for? Brett. Drop the first name altogether. Just call yourself Bret Hart. Melissa by Bret Hart. You're off to a fine start, Frank. Just keep them coming. Simple human stories about the kind of folk that you've known out here. And one of these days, the world will hail you as a great writer. Never was there truer prophecy. The outcasts of Poker Flat. Tennessee's partner, the heathen Chinese, the luck of Roaring Camp, the idol of Red Gulch, two men of Sandy Bar. The stories of Bret Hart swept the nation, acclaimed as a new kind of writing into which was woven the real stuff of the West. Today in California, they still speak of the Bret Hart country, the region where a young man with a sensitive soul and mind wandered from job to job during the year that was to shape his destiny. Ha, ha, ha.